Welcome to Fun and Games Side Quests. Every episode is a different host sharing a video game they love and why they love it. Hello, Side Questers. My name is Flora Marigold. I'm a writer for Epilogue Gaming and a co host on the Left Behind Game Club podcast. Our podcast is a book club format where several friends, many of whom who have recorded side quest episodes themselves, pick a game to explore each episode. And Epilogue Gaming is a critical outlet to discuss video games like you would discuss art and literature, but specifically analyzing the stories and the mechanics of the games that make an impact after finishing them. Like the game I'm here to talk about today, If Found. Gender is an aspect of myself that I have struggled with for my entire life. In retrospect, it seems obvious that I have always been a woman, but it took years of denial, repression, emotional breakdowns, and midnight heart-to-hearts with loved ones before I was ready to admit it even to myself. But once the belief clicked into place that I couldn't hide from my gender any longer, I found myself picking up a series of texts, books, shows, games, even music, that allowed me to process the subject matter. One of those games was If Found, which flattened me across the pavement when I worked my way through its story. If Found is the reason I finally came out. I assume most people listening haven't played If Found. It's a game by a tiny studio called Dreamfeel, published by the more well-known Annapurna Interactive. And it features relatively static gameplay where you erase your way through the diary of a young woman. As you scrub away her words and illustrations, her character becomes clearer and clearer in terms of the narrative. If Found takes place in Ireland during the 1990s, which is a time and a place not known for radical progressivism and transgender acceptance. The player is introduced to Cassio, a young trans woman who has returned from a stint of college to her hometown, where she grapples with how people see and refer to her, how she fits in various social groups, rekindles old bonds and forges new ones, and perhaps most difficultly, how her mother sees or fails to see her. Cassio doesn't have it easy, but she also doesn't face impossible difficulties when she returns home, at least at first. In the exact opposite sense of how you, the player, erase the details of Cassio's life, the game builds and adds on to the vague sketch of Cassio that you were first given. Cassio rekindles relationships, reprocesses buried memories, and her diary tells brief vignettes of how these people are more than mere cardboard cutouts in her life, both in the past and currently. As Cassio rekindles these relationships, she explores them anew in the way that returning to one's home after a stretch of time, gender transition or otherwise, is bound to cause. She finds dead ends, but she also finds threads of hope, like in her relationship to music and independence. If Found never judges, but always dwells on this mixture of highs and lows, always emotionally within that pull of either direction, with its willingness to let ambience and ambiguity linger. In some ways, If Found feels more like an explorable art installation than a traditional video game, but the physical act of erasure draws you into the page, peeling back every layer and seeking the same understanding that Cassio must have been searching for when she first etched her thoughts onto the surface. If Found is incredibly easy to resonate with, but there are two moments in this game that absolutely broke me and are why I decided to talk about it on SideQuest today. The first involves a letter that Cassio's mom writes her. I'll share an excerpt here verbatim. She writes, I've heard things. I understand you're not who I thought you were, but I can't believe it. This seems so sudden. There were no signs. You never told me you were unhappy. I'm sorry if all of this is my fault. I must have raised you wrong. People do say it's bad for your child to be tied to your apron, but I just cared so much for you, pet. 
If you haven't read my coming out article, then it's worth unpacking the significance of this letter here. The disbelief, the dismissal, the self-blaming, the implication of wrongness. This letter is coming from a place of love, but not from a place of understanding, and the sort of backhanded attempt at affection that only a cis mother who has never really spent time with queer people might articulate. It just stings to read this. I was raised by a single mother, personally, and in my coming out journey, I was more scared to tell her than anyone else. Not because I thought my mother to be particularly transphobic, but because the possibility of her rejection was too painful for me to even bear. It took months, years after accepting my own gender for me to feel comfortable sharing it with other people, and even then, after coming out to so many trusted individuals, I trembled at the possibility of all of these emotions displayed in Cassio's letter from her mother happening to me. I must have raised you wrong. As a reaction to your child coming out, it's just brutal. Self-hatred is an incredible barrier within my own transition, and I still feel choked up thinking about these words from Cassio's mom. The other moment in If Found happens much later into its story, and rather than contextualize the entire scene fully, just in case you walk away from this monologue looking to play If Found, I will cut right to the chase. There's a moment towards the very end of the story where Cassio's mother embraces her in a moment of desperation, and in reassuring Cassio, her mother calls her by her chosen name for the first time. Cassio's mom spends the story not really being supportive, inquisitive, or affirming whatsoever, so this simple gesture of acknowledging Cassio's chosen name, her real name, caused me to lose my composure. I couldn't read that scene without crying, and I had to stop playing for a little bit because the emotional catharsis wasn't something confined to just my thoughts. My entire body processed these emotions, trembling with hope and gratitude and relief and just the glimmer of possibility that maybe I could reach that point of acceptance and acknowledgement from my own mother as well. And thankfully, I eventually did. I played If Found in the fall of 2020, and that was my breaking point. There was nothing I could do to bury my gender, repress it, and pretend like I was cis any longer. It was far more painful being in the closet, being an imposter, simply for fear of how others might react. Coming out is the single greatest act of self-love that has ever happened in my life, and it feels so silly to credit a video game for that radical moment of embracing the truth about myself. But sometimes you pick up a piece of fiction and it speaks to you in a way that no amount of logical reasoning ever truly could. The feelings produced by If Found gave me a certain stoic determination that being myself was worth any possible suffering that doing so might incur. And I will always be grateful to this video game for helping me find that resolve. So, if you're looking for one of the best queer stories in video games, I'd first turn you to If Found. Though the story is queer, it's also a ton of other things. It's only about two hours long. It features a metaphorical space adventure narrative involving singularities and black holes, and it's unapologetically Irish as well, so much so that the game is self-aware enough to include a glossary for all of the slang. If Found also has my favorite little in-cap sequence to any, like, visual novel -y game that I can think of, which is that after clearing through Cassio's diary, you get to make this little This Book Belongs To page, where you customize a portrait of Cassio, of yourself. It's just a beautiful moment to forge either your own or Cassio's identity 
after a game dedicated so entirely to erasing the past. Finally, the game helps you forge the future, and I think that's just beautiful. Once again, I am Flora Marigold, and you can check out my articles at epiloggaming.com. You can listen to my podcast at leftbehindgame.club. And you can, of course, find me on Twitter at LudonarrativeFM, where I share all the things that excite me about video games. Thanks all for listening, and happy gaming. Hey there, Screen Beans. Have you heard about Screen Snark? Rachel, this is an ad break. They aren't screen beans until they listen to the show. Fine. Potential screen beans. You like movies and TV shows, right? I mean, who doesn't? Screen Snark is a casual conversation about the movies and television shows that are shaping us as we live our everyday lives. That's right, Matt. We have a chat with at least one incredible guest every episode, hailing from all walks. We've interviewed chefs, writers, costumers, musicians, yoga teachers, comedians, burlesque dancers, folks in the film and TV industry, and more. We'd be delighted for you to join us every other Monday on the Certain POV Podcast Network. Or wherever you get your podcasts, fresh and tasty off the presses. What? what? That's... No, that's not... Can I call them screen beans now? Fine. Screen beans! So tune in and we'll see you at the movies or on a couch somewhere. Because you're a whole screen beans now. You will be mine. Aurora. CPOV. CertainPOV.com.